It's Coach Peggy, and welcome to the Coach Peggy Show. I'm telling you what, every time I listen to that intro, I end up back here just kind of jamming and doing my thing, and then I realize how long it is, and each time I say how long it is, so <laughs> I probably should do something about it. All right, listen, this is where we talk about everything wellness and everything well-being, and so whether, like you heard the intro, whether it is about your heart, your spirit, or whether we're going to talk mind and body, I just want to bring together everybody, especially in 2020. It's all about relationships and community, and we are all one. So as you know, we get diverse here, and it is no different today than any other day. I've been doing this 31 years, and I just love to bring different people together. And My guest today I'm so jazzed about. So I always start the show with a quote, and I actually took this quote, Kat, from your intro, which was gorgeous. So the quote is this, and it is from Dr. Bernie Siegel. He's a New York Times bestselling author who wrote the forward in her actual book we're talking about today, Chaos to Clarity. Here is his quote. Change is a labor of pain through which we can give birth to a new self and life, which makes the pain meaningful and justified. Oh my gosh. What do you think about that, Kat? I yeah. think it's, it's, it's right on. I mean, there's, there's another quote that I, I like to quote from Winston Churchill, and it's, when you're, when you're walking through the doors of hell, keep going. <laughs> oh. Don't stop. Keep going till you come out the other side. And you so that's just to clarity. You just described my life. I was looking <laughs> for a little, that's it, just keep on trekking. I have a really inappropriate bracelet that I can't say what it says on it that has that motto in line. So listen, you guys, change is inevitable. We all know that super intellectually and that it's going to happen. It just is what it is. But getting into that breakdown and honoring it and coming through the other side, believing we can, smarter, braver, healthier is the toughest part. So we're going to chat about that today. I want to give you an intro to Kat Cavanaugh's Cannabis. You know, I study that. You, you've got and, your clothes, ca cannabis. cannabis, just like the cannabis you smoke, but cannabis okay. with a V. Why didn't I, you tell me that when we talked before? Seriously, <laughs> I would have remembered that. I lived in Colorado for several years. I would have remembered that. So listen, she is the queen of dreams is what they call her. She is a syndicated columnist, PR guru, video podcaster, radio show host. Her divine dreams actually, you guys, if you haven't looked into her, helped her diagnose her own breast cancer of which she has survived three times, not one, not two, but three. She has been seen on Dr. Oz and the doctors and AB, or NBC and CBS. And it's, you know, she's internationally. So that's all I want to say. Keynote speaker, you can find her. Her thing, she says, don't tell God how big your problems are. Tell your problems how big your God is. What? Kat, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Peggy. It's such a treat to be here. I can tell this is already going to be fun, and I need a, I need that relaxed fun today. I've just been working too hard. Girl, I'm going to lift you up. At once. We're going to lift each other up, because I was just telling Kat and my producer, Zach, before we started, my other laptop crashed, firewalls crashed, everything. About 90 seconds before the show started, I got my new, my other PC, my old one. So we're going to lift each other up. There you go. I do have water in my coffee cup, not vodka or anything, but we're still going to have fun. So, <laughs> all right. So, the show for vodka. <laughs> hey, you know, they do it, the skinny vodka show. You know, they have all sorts of podcasts out there, right? So this Chaos to Clarity, it is not your first book whatsoever. This is not your first rodeo. And girl, what I love about the way that you set this up is it reminds me of the chicken soup books, the chicken, you know, chicken soul books, all the ones that were written. Because what I love about it is today we don't make enough time to read. And when we do, it seems like we have to start over because we don't remember what's said before. And so what I loved about the framework of those books where you sit down and you resonate with somebody's story and you finish it and you go, and that's what this book reminded me of is all the baby stories that kind of kept you wanting to go or you could break them up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, oh. hey, all sorts mm -hmm. of people. I bet it took a while to put all those stories of transformation together. Was it tougher, a little bit tougher with that framework than your other books? 
It was because although this is not my first book, this was the first um, compilation book that oh, that okay. I put together, multi-author book. So, yeah. what 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 was a little more challenging with this book was we Patricia Caginello, Reverend Patricia Caginello, and I, who's the co-author, she's also the publisher. So I actually I I was blessed. I I got right in with the publisher, and Dr. Bernie Siegel did do the forward. She did not accept all of the stories that came in. They had to be really, really good stories, and we kept it down to more to no no more than twenty stories. I know with the Chicken Soup for the Soul books, it's a hundred and one stories, and the books are really thick because I'm in, you know, one of those books. And we wanted this to be a book you could put beside your bed, pick yeah. it up, read, and you know, a story that's going to make you laugh and then going to make you cry. Mm -hmm. um, and then go to sleep with with some a good feeling in your heart. So that's I didn't realize that you guys chunked those. I mean, it makes sense because I know there's not as many, but that I, I love that you were that picky because it makes the book even mean even more because it shows that you just didn't, you know, put a bunch of them together. The subject really had to align with that. So this is the tough part because I know you're not a brand new, you know, you've been interviewed several times. You have your own, you know, you are an interviewer a lot so it's just like we're just like two girls hanging out in yes. starbucks i didn't get paid to say their name either but uh, in this particular book you know what made you what's your backstory that connected to this specific book because you're a dream guru so did you get like an inkling or a dream to take this route like what's your backstory that led you to wanting to do it this way well, I am a dream guru. I used my dreams to diagnose my breast cancer three times when the medical community missed it. Not that I'm doctor bashing because I don't. My, my dream said, go back to your doctor. They didn't say, go find Swami Rami Ramalama Ding Dong because I would have done it. Um, they right. said, you know, go back to your doctor. They had confidence in my doctors. And when the doctors used a second set of tests, they found them. So that was very chaotic, though, until I reached that point where the doctors said, oh, my goodness, she's not crazy. Um, and I thought, you know, what a what a great book to produce. There are other women out there with other stories of where they weren't sure they were going to survive their chaos. Mm -hmm. And yet in the end, they became a better person for it, like. One of the stories in the book here you probably remember was a woman who had her children kidnapped by her ex-husband. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, having your children kidnapped, you send them off for a weekend with your ex-husband mm -hmm. who is in another country and has come to visit them, and then your kids are not returned. And then you find out that they've gone from South Africa to, to uh, Portugal, and you can't reach them. You can't get a hold of them. The laws are even different. Right. So... You know, what was, we, we know everybody's got chaos, but what brought them to that clarity? Mm -hmm. And it was forgiveness, where she could actually say to her husband, I understand you grew up really messed up. And I understand that that is what was caused our relationship to fall apart to begin with. And mm -hmm. I understand that's what caused you to steal my children because you hated me so much because you identified me with your mother. I forgive you. I forgive you. I've got my children back now. And if you'd like to see them, I will still let you see them. She never heard from him again. I'm like, wow. I, I, I don't know if I could do that. I'd be so afraid. But she stepped into that power and she moved right through that chaos into total clarity and said, mm -hmm. I had to forgive him. In order for it to not weigh me down like a great big rock around my neck, right. I had to actually forgive him and mean it walk the walk not right. just talk the talk walk that walk and so many women in the book did that yes you abuse cases i mean all sorts of things that are in the book you guys those of you listening and watching you have to get you seriously have to get the book yet you know the thing that we forget sometimes especially i've been in these situations too not obviously that catastrophic but what we forget is those watching us even our children watching how we deal with chaos watching how we come out the other side watching our words we use and how illness affects us with how the chaos might be the monkey on the back and we don't often see that till we come out the other side and it's 10 years down the road with the wish i had of 
Is there a name, because we had talked about, there's a name for fear or phobia, because isn't part of that when you go into the chaos is stirring up and you've mm -hmm. got this, um, you know, all those bubbling emotions that we can't control sometimes it, with my clients drives them most of the time for to a bag of Doritos, right? Mm -hmm. um, or something, all of us, cake, donuts for me. But when the fear and the negative emotions are bubbling in, during the chaos, I was just curious, is there, there is a medical definition? Of mess there is, up. there is. And, and in the book, uh, because my degree is in psychopathology, uh, I um, come from the psychotherapy point of view throughout the book at mm -hmm. the end of the, the uh, parts, part one, two, three, and four. I talk about that part from the psychological point of view, from the psychologist's point of view, whereas Patricia Caginella, who's a reverend, talks mm -hmm. about it from the spiritual point of view. So there is a word that, that um, is the fear of change, and it's very high on the scale. And I have to actually look at it because it's Greek and it's about this long. That's why and it's called metathesial phobia. Metathesial okay. phobia. And meta means change. So it is the fear of change. And one of the biggest changes that we fear is moving, which is um, tropophobia. And the other one is just death. That is the biggest right. change, death. Okay. Of self or others or being even worried about it. Mm -hmm. Gosh. So got to go into this. Did you know the co-authors ahead of time? No. Oh, interesting. You, you mean, you mean the, the, the people in the book? Yeah, the people. Strangers. <laughs> they were strangers. Yes, we just, you know, uh, Patricia and I put the call out to authors um, on Biz Catalyst 360 magazine because I'm I'm a columnist for them as well. So Dennis Patoko is the CEO of the magazine. So we told him what we were going to do, and he said, you know, let me help you with this. Let me put a call out to all of these authors that we have in the magazine. So I didn't know them, even though we were kind of connected through the magazine. They started coming in. And then Deborah Bouvet of Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, of which I am a host, she got involved. So we had some network people come in. And then just my social media sites, I yeah. put on there. And before we knew it, we had the book full within four or five months. Oh, my gosh. It, 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 it went really it was like, hang on, <laughs> yes. hang on. It was really fast. So you're ready for the trilogy. Right, right. we're <laughs> in the process of doing the second book now. And you know what, uh, Peggy, I can tell you the title of the book now. We've decided this week we're going to do the title. We're waiting to hear who's going to be writing the forward. It's going to be a really big name if the one we want is coming in, and I have a feeling he will. The name of the book is going to be Crappy to happy. <laughs> I knew you did, but happy to happy. I love that. Oh my God, that's good. So, is it going to be more stories? It is. It's going to be transformational stories of joy, sacred stories oh, of transformational good. joy. So, this book, um, because uh, chaos to clarity is. is is a little more heavy, but but the endings are positive and and they're beautifully written stories. People, we, they've got great reviews, and we're still in the top. Um, we're still in Amazon bestsellers list. Uh, but crappy to happy is going to deal with. Well, you know what I mean. Those days that you just want to flush down the toilet. Well, yeah. don't flush them. Send them to us. We <laughs> hear about them. You know, when when things just go so bad, you go, why did I get up? Why did yes. this happen? Just one small event is all we don't want. We don't want a life story. One small event and the ones that are coming in are hysterical. What do you, I, oh, I can't even wait for that one. <laughs> what do you think, so you've got these authors, the stories are coming in, you, the compilation's all in front of you. The common theme is blank. Now, the, the subjects are different, obviously. Yeah, they're all different. It. But what, what's the com the thread going through these these characters or how the, these resilient, is it resiliency? What are your observations? The thread that runs through all these stories in the Chaos to Clarity book, and, and, and I believe they're going to be in the Crappy to Happy book too, because that's what I'm seeing coming in is everybody has a crisis. 
and we want to hear about their crisis because we can identify with the crisis but yeah. we want to know how they move through the crisis and that's the thread every single person in these books had a crisis moved through the crisis and became a better person for having had the crisis and that's what we want so when you have a crisis whether we compare and i know i'm totally off road here but it just mm -hmm. i just pinged whether it's grief whether because you know you see the list of stress and your list of a hundred and you have these many things hit you that explains why you had a crappy year and oh my gosh that makes sense that you're you know you're not you're on antidepressants now so when you think of whether you've lost a house or whether you've lost a, a child or maybe even a job or or whatever it is what is it that is it I'm, I'm thinking about i know that you don't probably have like a top five things that that people do but do they notice it quicker do they have a history of dealing with change better because they've been through a bunch of stuff like what would you say that you know the first few steps are because we have to feel the feels right of the right. you know and then we have the fear of not wanting like for instance leaving the yucky relationship or you know time to quit your job Right. Um, the first thing that happens is a lot of times people have to hit bottom. Mm -hmm. They have to reach a point where it's do or die. That's what we, we saw in, in almost all of the stories. People will hold on to the devil they know versus the devil they don't know. So yes. even if the relationship is bad, they know what to expect. They, they know what to expect as far as being yelled at, even physically abused versus going off on their own because deep down inside they're codependent. Yeah. So in the, a lot of these stories, these codependent women, when their back was up against a wall and they had to make the choice to survive for their children, mm -hmm. they became less codependent. And that was the big turning point. And that's happen that happens on so many levels uh, in different ways throughout life. You're codependent on your parents. You're codependent on your boyfriends or your girlfriends or a group or a sorority or a, 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 your peer group. And so it's that breaking out, surviving the break, mm -hmm. growing from the break, and re-emerging is that beautiful butterfly out of that icky cocoon yeah. that makes the big difference and that's what we want to know about we, we we want the stories to help those people who are the butterflies still st hanging upside down holding onto their cocoon and dripping goo <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> hang in there you can get it done you'll flap your wings in no time well, so what's your well, how did, if up to now what has been your biggest change or this biggest struggle or maybe what took the most time for you to get on the other side was it were you willing to share? <laughs> sure, sure. I think the biggest change in my life was realizing how important our dreams are to us as guidance. And part of that was realizing that we choose a lot of the chaos that we have. Mm -hmm. It's part of our life journey. So when I was, uh, when my cancer was missed the first time, and I, I talk about this in the book, Chaos to Clarity. When it's missed the first time, I, I have to stand in my power and go up against mm -hmm. the doctors to get them to give me the second set of tests. And it took three months to get the second set of tests, uh, which was exploratory surgery. And it, it showed that, that I was in stage two with it in my lymph nodes. And so I remember almost five years later, and this isn't in the book, but it's going to be probably in the next book. Um, again, the doctors missed my, my breast cancer. They, they told me I was healthy to go home when I actually had a nine by 11 centimeter area that was cancerous. And I, when I heard that, when it was confirmed with pathology reports again, I was sure I was going to die. Peggy, I was sure I was going to die. I could not imagine surviving that. Right. So I fell asleep on the bed crying. And in these dreams, I would have these Franciscan monks come in. And they would tell me, 
come with me. My, my regular dream would freeze. They would say, come with me. We have something to tell you. And they told me I had the breast cancer. They actually put my hand on it. And they said, you feel that that's breast cancer. Go back to your doctors. So this time when I woke up from my, I dreamt that I woke up from my dream and the three monks were standing there. And I said, look, I know why you're here because I know I'm dying. It's okay. And uh, I'm good with it, but you may want to warn God before I get up there because I got some bones to pick with them. And they said to me, don't you remember? I said, remember what? You said, Kat, that before you, before you were born that you wanted to come down here onto the earth plane during a time when God, higher power, spiritual guidance is being taken out mm. of everything and locked away in a closet. And you were going to show that science only goes so far oh, and that man. it was God. And I suddenly realized all the crap I was going through from, you know, crappy to happy. <laughs> right. Of my own choosing. And that was a big wake up call. And they said, we told you we'd be with you every step of the way. We have been, we still will be, you are not going to die. That was almost 20 years ago and I didn't. So it suddenly, it I didn't realize it me. was that long ago. Yeah. Wow. You know that, so, I can't think of anything bigger than to fight the medical community. I mean, talk about fear or the possible change with that. I mean, they could say, go home and you think you're, you're crazy or the changes could be something that you've asked, you know, you don't even know what you're asking for right. multiple yeah. surgeries, chemo. I mean, who knows if you haven't, so that the change can be not just the geographic, you know, home you live in or, or, or whatever. It's really, like you said, stepping into your power, standing up tall and just, I mean, it, unfortunately, we do sometimes have to get to the bottom and everybody's bottom is different, but man, to step in that sooner than later, it's almost like, um, you know, if not now, then, then when, and when you're willing to take the chance that it might be worse than it is now, then to go for it. I mean, yours was really life or death, but for some people it's. Well, some it's of the true. women in the book, it was life or death. Um, you know, some of the women yeah. in the book who lost their husband, yeah. um, they wanted quite a few of the women in the book were contemplating suicide mm -hmm. and yeah, they true. hit bottom. They were up against the wall. It was do or die time. And mm -hmm. so what helped them turn that corner? That's what we were looking for in all the books. And so what turned, what helped me turn my corner was having these spirit guides mm -hmm that showed up and said, you, you said you wanted to do this. And we told you, okay. I'm like, what was that? I remember I t when I woke up, when I looked at them, I said, what the heck was I smoking up there when I said, <laughs> and that's the only time I've ever seen them laugh. Something must've been out of my freaking mind to choose to come down here and go through right. What was I thinking? You know, right. I did. Yeah. And you're changing lots, lots and lots of lives. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, you guys. We're going to come back. What I want to talk about to Kat is, you know, the positive messages that this book is just snowballing into and how it's helping other people. Um, and then I want to talk about maybe she can give us some action steps on what we all can, you know, when we can move through. And many times I believe that we're afraid to tell others what we're going through because we think it's just us and there's this mask we put on for everybody else. I'm speaking for myself too. And if we would just share our stories and see that we're more alike than not, mm -hmm. whew, we could make, we could change the world. We could change the world. All right, you guys, so don't go away. We're going to come back with a lightning round for Kat that she knows nothing about. And in the second half of the show, I'm going to, towards the end, talk about fad or for real. We're going to do a little controversial stuff. So come right back. You are on the Coach Peggy Show. Talk to you soon. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. We're just jamming here. You're listening to the Coach Peggy Show, and I'm here with Miss Cat, who is the dream guru. Now, listen, I wish I keep saying this. I love the outtakes because we chit chatted during the break and we're going to kind of spin a little bit on you. But, you know, first thing we have to take care of is the lightning round. The lightning round is completely off road. I'm going to throw her some questions. She's just going, what the H-E double toothpick is going on? OK, three questions coming at you. Here we go. If you could read minds 
which I know you probably can. <laughs> if you could read the mind of anyone, though, who would you want to read? God. Oh, I have. Okay, that's a first. <laughs> That almost looked like a duh to you. Okay, that's a good one. Have not had that answer before. If you needed to give one of your five cents, one of them, what would it be? If I needed to give one of my five senses up to somebody else, mm -hmm. I'd give my nose to them, my smell. Because yeah, I, that makes smell sense. I smell stuff nobody else can smell. And I'd say, here, try it now. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, I think I would agree... I think I would agree with you that I'd give up smell because I have migraines and often that does not serve me when I can smell things. It just spins me. Oh my gosh. I was just thinking about the read whose mind I could read if I had that ability. And I just don't think I want to. <laughs> I, don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to. I just don't want to know. All right. Last one. Would you want to be able to sleep in? Is your, are you a sleep in person or are you a go to bed early person? Oh, sleep in. Sleep yes. in. I just don't, I do not. If dreams are a snippet of death, I can't wait to die. I never want to wake up. I love dreaming in the mornings. Yeah, that's when it kicks in during REM, isn't it? Yeah. Most yeah. of the time for people. Yeah. All right, you guys. So we're back talking about chaos to clarity. It is a great compilation of about 20 stories they're not just happenstance. They actually really, really cat worked on that, making sure they were really good stories. And it's talking about change. And when we were on the break, we were talking about, she's going to give us some tips, some sharing, I should say, not even tips on some dreams she's requested or some people emailed into her this week. And we're going to talk about her point in a second, but I'm going to tell you that think about this when she's talking, think about if we really expected change, almost expected it like the sun is coming up and it's going to get dark, how different that would be in not being like I'm the only one that got a flat tire or I'm whatever. So I want you to explain about these dreams and this oneness. And I want everybody to really think about how, again, like I said earlier, we're more like than not. Mm -hmm. So what kind of emails are you getting this week for your show coming up? Because you've got a podcast coming up later tonight. I do. It six. And so what you get and what's the theme this week? The, and these people don't know each other, right? Is Yeah, it's um, actually I've got it right here. It's going to be oh, girl. talking about um, love journey, love never dies. So that's what we're going to be talking about and how people come back into your dreams mm -hmm. and talk to you through your dreams because love yeah. never dies. And that's the one telephone line that allows yeah. us with our deceased loved ones so when you're but you were when you were talking about change Peggy I remember uh I because I, I I say my prayers every night and I reiki a whole bunch of people every night and I remember saying to God do anything you want to me in this life but don't bore me <laughs> and he's lived up to that Girl. change keeps you from ever being bored yeah. you're never going to get bored yeah. with change um and and it does it does help you grow. You you learn to roll with the punches and and uh, you can do anything. So, getting back to the dreams, I've had um, dreams sent to me through Quora. I'm on Quora, and other people will send me dreams through emails because on my radio show that I do tonight, which is also video like this Zoom video. Um, I talk about dreams. The name of the show is Dreaming Healing on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. And there are dreams that have been coming in just this week mm -hmm. that are amazing because they show how we are connected to universal oneness. Two dreams came in on the same day by two people who don't know each other. One came through Quora, the other one came through an email from my website, and they both shared the same type of dream. I know you're telling me this. I'm like, come on, girl. If I didn't know you, like, I know I don't know you like besties yet, but seriously, I'd be like, really? You guys listen to this. Okay. So these two dreams come in. They're from two women. And the what they're sharing in the dream is the fact that they go back to their past. In one case, one woman goes back to elementary school. They're having a recurrent dream. And a recurrent dream means that something's going on in your life you're not figuring out the answer. You're not figuring out the messages. And so it just keeps coming back and coming back till mm -hmm. you get it. So if you want the recurrent dream to stop, 
write it down and figure it out. And in both of these dreams, one girl is going back to elementary school, which she's been out of for like 20 years. Mm -hmm. Other woman is going back to her old home. Both of these women get there and they can't find their socks and shoes. Not just their shoes, not just their socks. Both of them cannot find their socks or their shoes. And so the one girl starts walking back to elementary school barefoot, still looking for her socks and shoes. The other woman finds her socks and shoes in her old home, but they don't fit her feet anymore. So she's hunting around under the beds and stuff, and she's fi- she finds a different set of socks and shoes that aren't hers, but they fit, right. they don't match, but she doesn't want to walk out barefoot. So she, she decides she's going to go ahead and walk outside with not matching socks and shoes. What these dreams mean is you've gone through change. Mm-hmm. Your old life no longer fits. Even though you keep trying to go back, you can't right. go home. You can't go back to your childhood. You can't go back to your old home and your socks and shoes keep you comfortable. They keep you warm. Mm -hmm. But what's happened is your feet are bare so that you can be grounded. Yeah, that's true. The earth plane. You need to draw from that energy in order to get yourself resituated to, Mm -hmm. to embrace the change. And so the one woman decides, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can get back into elementary school barefoot, walking down the street. It's going to be uncomfortable. I'm probably going to cut my feet, but I can't find any shoes. Well, chances are she's going to figure out she can't go home. She can't go back there. She needs to ground herself and decide what it is about her past that she would like to reconnect with in her future. Oh, okay. Is it friends? Gotcha. Is it the lessons she learned? the love she felt, a feeling of belonging. And the other woman who found a pair of shoe, found a shoe and a sock, but they didn't match the other shoe and sock she found, but they fit. Yeah. Maybe she has to realize that her left brain and her right brain are totally different. Yeah. It's okay to use those two aspects of your brain, the artistic and the, what, what I call the, the logical person and the artistic person, it's okay to wear different colored socks and shoes that don't match. The only person that's really going to care is you. Exactly. Dare to stand in your power, whatever that power is, whatever color it is, and let those shoes and socks take you into the future. And so many people... And I was just thinking that so many people admire those people who are different. I mean, how many people go, oh, gosh, I wish I could do that. But, you know, so people walking around with different socks, I mean, literally, right? But doing something different and outside the box, even if it resonates with you a little bit, most of us identify with and wish we had the nerve to do it when we really should be doing it. So, all right, I want to ask you, with your with your instances that happened with your medical you know, you're three times having breast cancer, having your dreams, coming out the other side, all the exposure you have had to all these stories and these amazing people and reading, you know, reading their dreams and and kind of absorbing. When it comes to change, is there anything that you would do differently if you went back? And I know we can't, but let's, let's play with it a little bit. What would you do differently? Um, I'm not sure that I would have. I'm not sure that I could have. I think I pushed my doctors as far as I could up against the wall with their back against the wall because they had to work within hospital policy. And I believe hospital Um, policy will kill you quicker than any disease or anything else. And so in order for them to be covered uh, legally, they had to stay within hospital policy and hospital policy dictated what they could yeah. or could not do. Right. So to push them any further would have been a detriment to me, but I was able to push them enough that they were able to bend the rules without breaking them, which was to my benefit. And it taught them to listen to their patients. Good point. So Good. the next person coming up, 
who would say, look, I had this really bizarre dream. I keep having it. It keeps coming back. I'm going to keep coming into your office. You're not going to get rid of me. I'm going to be the pebble in your shoe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe now they'll listen. Yes. Okay. I need you to give everybody a call to action. So you're in charge. Magic wand. Let me give you the soapbox. You got a microphone. Everyone, everyone's listening. <laughs> you can see them, Kat. There they are. The field's okay. just parted for you. <laughs> what is your call to They're action? Uh, They're so beautiful. Well, my call to action is go to my website, Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis, O K E E F E. K A N A V is in Victor, O S is in Sam, or you can just type into the URL search the Queen of Dreams and watch my radio show, my my show tonight. It used to be a radio show. Now it's a video show like this also uh, on dreaming healing. And if you've got a story that you need to tell that's going to make a difference in somebody else's life, definitely go to sacred stories publishing right and look for a book project send us your story yeah reach out make a change take it take a chance to yeah. share your story empower others and empower yourself and find a connection we have a sense of be belonging and there's so much comfort it's mm -hmm. more than just girlfriends playing bunko yeah. on Friday night. And, I, so and I invite you, Peggy, you know, Coach Peggy, check it out. Check it out, girl. I know. Don't you want to chat all the time? I mean, why not? <laughs> that would be so much fun. I'll have to share my dreams with you sometime because, whoo, girl, oh, some yeah. of them, I've had some reoccurring dreams. One of them, I'm on a plantation in a yellow dress standing outside there's pillars behind me i'm in a yellow dress and i'm there it's back during slavery and they're out there and i'm looking back and my husband's like a governor or a big deal and i'm trying to figure out how to free the slaves in front of me and it keeps and it's been coming up since i was a teen oh my goodness that is a past this is felix my siamese cat <gasps> felix here he's just gonna howl the whole time so sounds like you Ooh. were visiting a past lifetime in your dream and the message is, there is no death, there's only rebirth. Girl. All right, I appreciate it. I am going to, we're going to stay in touch with you. I'm going to let you go. We're going to go to a quick commercial. And you guys, you are listening to Coach Peggy show. And find this girl, Cat Cannabis, just like cannabis. Love cannabis. you guys. See you oh. soon. <laughs> okay, Cat. <laughs> Bye. What's up? I don't know if sup is a word. It just sounded cool. You are listening to Coach Peggy here on the Coach Peggy Show, and we are back. Why are we back? We are back to talk about bad or for real. So this is the part of the show where I come up with something that I've heard out there as a coach over these gazillion and a half years and decide if I think it's a fad, what my opinion might be on it, or if I think it's for real, and then I usually answer some questions. And I'm actually going to marry the two of them up today because one of the personal questions I had come in over the last couple of weeks, maybe two or three weeks ago, when I was silly enough to ask people to ask me personal questions instead of just random topic questions. Okay, don't always do that, you guys, unless you really want to know because it's scary. So the question was, Peggy, I know you're on a plant-based diet, so do you take supplements? How do you know if you're anemic or if you're lacking B12s? I cannot tell you how often I get this question. Somebody will see a bruise on me and tell me I'm low in something. They, I cannot, oh, you're low on energy. You must be anemic because you don't eat half a cow. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to talk to you today about supplements, vitamins and supplements. And I'm looking over here to the right because I brought a bunch of them to show you. So those who you are watching, then you'll be able to see what I'm doing. If you happen to be listening, you can go on to my YouTube channel. You can find all things wellness or look for Peggy Wilms. That's W-I-L-L, two L's, M-S. Sounds like Williams, but it's not. And so we're going to talk about vitamins. So vitamins, there are water-soluble and fat-soluble vitamins. Really, what does that mean? 
means that some of them you store, some of them you consume, and if you don't need them anymore, they go on out your urine, okay? A, D, E, and K, those are the vitamins that are fat soluble. So you wanna kind of be a little bit careful when you're taking supplements, A, D, E, and K. Um, you don't wanna O, D, and take a bunch of vitamin D. See, I was a little poet right there. So I'm just showing you some vitamin D because I take that. Um, if you've had anything with bone density issues in the past, you might have to take some calcium and vitamin D. So A, D, E, K, fat soluble. Water soluble are gonna be most of your other minerals, your B12s, your vitamin Cs, all of that stuff. So can you still OD on those? Oh yeah, heck yeah. So when people tell you vitamin Cs, I'm holding up some gummy vitamin Cs. We're gonna talk about this, I'll tell you. You know, people pound this stuff. You know, I've got a packet here of you guys probably take this emergency all the time. You know, everybody travels and is getting sick and they're pounding this. If you guys are wondering sometimes why you get some irritable bowel stuff or bloating or nausea, I can tell you to take a look at your supplements or to make sure you aren't ODing on them. Because with gummies, we're just chowing down on them like they are gummy candies. And you got to be super careful. I am not kidding. I want, I always say as a coach, you know, just like the doctors do, they ask you for a reason, you guys. They ask you, tell me what you take that is, you know, prescription or over the counter. And we blow it off. I don't want you to blow it off. It is part of your diet. It is, you know, your nutrients and minerals. And if you're taking all this stuff, look what I got. Look what I got to discuss. All these bottles that are in my house that I do not take, okay? <laughs> Somebody that I love dearly takes all these things in my house. Um, I really want you to log them. What? Log them? Like log them in maybe my fitness pal or something? Are you talking about logging vitamins? Yeah, let me tell you why. If you use my fitness pal, you know you guys can look at the label, right? You can kind of scan it and it can look things up. The main reason, do you know how many calories are in these things? Do you even have any idea of what the, um, the ingredients are, the additives? The majority of all of your uh, gummy vitamins are going to have, I'll even read, read them to you, polydextrose, water, gelatin, xylitol, those are going to be the main ingredients. I never want anybody to take, if there's three, four, five lines of ingredients in any food, you're starting to get into really man-made, chemically grossy stuff. I want you, I swear, to look at these. Your kids are downing these things. Do I think they're bad? Absolutely not saying they're bad. If you don't like to swallow pills and you and your doctor, your doctor has determined that you need some supplements and you don't like to swallow pills, then gummies are an awesome alternative. But if you're counting calories, you might want to consider swallowing the pill. Why? Why is it different? Because all of the sugar, all of the preservatives, the things that sit inside these gummies to gum them literally together have calories. And a typical packet, so you know when you get those packets that are in the boxes and have all the vitamins cut up for you and they're not cut up, put together for you in their regular pills, you might want to go with something like that so you don't have to have all the bottles. But if you go and add all these up, sometimes your day is 300 calories, 250 to 300 calories of vitamins. So if you're trying to really watch your diet, if you're trying to dial down your calories, that is a heck of a darn place, great place to start. So why is this under fat or for real? Because I'm asked all the time, should I take these things? Here is my bottom line is you got to log them. First, you got to tell your doctor, please promise me from till death do we part that you'll tell your doc. The second thing is pay attention to your symptoms. I caught right away, I shouldn't say right away, I was slow. But in the last probably month, I have caught that emergency was ripping up my stomach. I was so nauseated, not feeling good, and I could not figure out why. And then I, I just, for some reason, stopped taking these. Then I started taking them again, and I was like, I was ODing on them. I, in the sense that I didn't need that much vitamin C. With my plant-based diet, <laughs> I must have enough vitamin C already. So here's my thing. 
You're going to see how you feel. You're going to see if you need them. And then you might want to have some blood work done. Why? Because blood work is going to tell you information that nobody else can tell you. Just like me, having my blood work done shuts a bunch of people up in my life that are telling me that I need to eat certain things. And then you know what to do about it. Get it? Got it? Good. So I'm going with the vitamins are for real. I do think that they make a really big difference, but the fad might be if you're consuming these gummies and you don't really need to, then don't fall back on the, it's a gummy. So just why not do it? You know what I'm saying, saying? Okay. So listen, we have coming up so many good guests in the next two weeks. We've got Lynn Riley is coming up and we've got, oh my gosh, integrating Western and Eastern medicine. And you guys got to pay attention to my Facebook site. So you can find me personal Facebook site, business Facebook site at all things wellness. You can find me on my website at all things wellness.com. Email me. Here we go. It's going to get boring. Peggy at all things wellness.com. And then you, I've got my YouTube channel. Of course, I've got my radio show here on transformation talk radio. The best thing that I would love to do I would love you to do so we can connect is email me, give me your questions. I can put them on the show. And if you want to work together, obviously reach out. I've got one program I want to tell you about right meow. 30 day reboot. It kicks off on March 2nd. It's 30 days only. And we do things a little bit different. We don't get rid of sugar, black and white. We don't do an exercise program, black and white. It's not all about just excommunicating things from your life. It's about adding certain habits and certain dimensions in your life. You're a big girl. You're a big boy. We can help work together. You get a private Facebook site with me and it's only 199 bucks, six videos. Seriously. What's your excuse? All right. Catch me here next Tuesday, 6 PM Eastern on the coach Peggy show. And you guys go out and get well and stay well. Talk to you soon. <laughs>